cool. And we are live. I'll just lock this meeting so we're undisturbed in Zoom. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. And we'll share our little video. And welcome, everybody. It's so good to be here with all of you. I am joined today by a very special guest whom I absolutely adore. She's near and dear to my heart. Um, and so some of you may know her already. You may have seen her channel or received healings from her. Her name is Lana, Healer Medicine Woman. And she is such a tremendous gift to uh, the Twin and Lightworker Collective, given all of the work that she does. And I'm just so pumped to be able to share her with you, <clears throat> as she's been a tremendous light for me. Um, and folks says hello. Um, Allison Scoff says hello. Joy to be. Welcome, Kim Mai. Welcome. Um, Gemini Princess, it's lovely to see you as well as Optimistic Soul. Lovely to have you guys. So I'll just share a little bit about Lana and then we'll go ahead and dive in. We've got time today. We're going to do a little bit of an interview um, and you'll get to know her. And then Lana is going to do a special energy update for this Twin Flames new moon, the Gemini new moon. Um happening today and then she'll do a little bit of a healing for us as a collective which i'm super pumped about um so <laughs> thanks for being here lana thank you so much for having me kay it's an honor to be here you're so welcome so for those of you that didn't know um lana is a clairvoyant and energy healer and healing coach who has been assisting and healing clients from all over the world in their spiritual journeys for over 12 years. She specializes in ancient energy healing techniques as well as energy healing in the field through color, frequency, and calibration of the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies. Since 2017, she's also been assisting the Twin Flame Collective, anchoring the Divine Feminine and Masculine Templates, and assisting twins through their journey, union, and mission. Because Lana is really able to see and feel energy, she's able to provide very specific insights and profound healings and activations to individual clients as well as the collective in very loving and powerful ways. She studied different spiritual traditions and arts and healing and self-healing since 15 with the purpose of serving and assisting others on their unique paths of ascension and expansion with the utmost care, compassion, and commitment. And you'll be able to hear this in her voice. Her voice is like honey liquid gold. <laughs> Um, like yours too <laughs> <laughs> thank you so she's also working to empower women and the divine feminine collective to embrace true feminine power through educating themselves on the uniqueness of feminine energy how to harness it and become one with it in their body and their soul she teaches women how to heal themselves through their own energy of self-love sacred sexuality and the embodiment of goddess energy. And she holds sacred circles for women, both online and offline, and offers individual coaching to awaken sacred feminine power from within. Um, Lana also assists the Divine Masculine Collective in a different way. She teaches classes and courses for Divine Masculine Energy. Um, aside from her individual healing sessions, specifically for men to embrace their divine self and assist them in loving and compassionate ways to reconnect to their emotions, to states of vulnerability through the power and presence of true divine masculine strength. She's developed teachings for men on how to harness masculine energy to heal their relationships to their body and their relationships to women and how to better serve the world through their unique expression, mission, and purpose. She is such 
a gift to all of us, Lana. I thank you so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Wonderful. Okay, so um, we'll do a little bit of interview now. Um, I'm really curious. So one of the things that I know you do is you work with light language. Yes? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about what light language is? Sure. Well, light language is the way that I see it or the way that I started working with it is it's just energetic information, which comes from the higher dimensions. So it's like um, the expression of ourselves, but from the higher dimensions, the expression of our divine being and light language allows us to build that bridge between those higher dimensions and the physical body so when we speak light language we actually are harnessing all of this energetic information coming from the higher realms coming from our higher self from our divine perspective and we're able to anchor it down into the earth through the use of sound, which is essentially frequency. So we kind of harness those higher frequencies and we translate them through our voice, through our physical bodies and birth them forward here in the third dimension. So this is a little bit how I see it. And when I started uh, to work with light language, I was always through the healing journey. I was always very um, passionate about different types of healing and I studied a lot of them. Um, and one of the things that were so effective for me when I was starting my journey was uh, singing mantras. So I went very deep into um, different spiritual traditions and lineages and studied why mantras were so um powerful and so useful in transforming and healing energy even if the person had no idea what they were chanting or the meaning of those chants or even if they came from a completely different background and they chanted that they will see they would see the results in their physical and in their energetic bodies so i really enjoyed uh chanting mantras and after that i started to notice how you know, sound can also be interpreted in energy as color and as waves and as frequency. And as a healer, we work with energies and we start to get to know like the fabric, let's say, of the energies, the textures, the colors. And we start to tune into these specific colors that we need in order to do a certain healing. So everything is light and it's all contained, let's say in the white, but the white contains in itself all of the spectrums of the rainbow. And each color has a unique quality to it. So in that way, we start to learn how to use the different colors, which means we start to learn how to use the different frequencies. And when I started to tune into doing mantras and toning, because I started just toning, which is very similar to light language, but instead of it uh, sounding like a language, it's just tones. And when you tone, which is kind of like when you chant the mantra OM, you just fill yourself up with that vibration and you are able to connect to creation, to, you know, to infinity and tap into that frequency, that high, high frequency of love of the divine and you're able to feel it and experience it through your body. So in a way for me, light language actually is bridging. It's like, it acts like a bridge between the higher realms and this dimension where we're currently at. So that is why it has such healing qualities because it is, it's, it is coming from a higher dimension. So when it comes here and it touches you or you listen to it or you receive the frequency of that which is being transmitted, your energetic body reacts to that and so does your physical body. So, yeah. 
I think I went a little bit <laughs> deep in there. That's beautiful. That, it's very yeah. helpful. Um, you know, it's interesting because that the toning was it's 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 such a beautiful resonant way to communicate healing frequencies mm -hmm. i know when when i've been in healing session with you and you've toned with me um like i can feel the frequency waves like moving across my body mm -hmm. um and when i re-listen to a lot of your healings on youtube i get that same transmission and yes. so, um, how did you get into toning and when did you, when you started to open up to light language, was it like your guides came in and they said, Hey, Lana, this is what this <laughs> means. Say this, or was it something a lot more organic? Like, can you explain it to us? Like we were five years old. Yes, of course. Um, well, it actually started for me, like the toning, I always did it. Um, but as I advanced in healing, uh, and as, you know, we started to have a lot of more possibilities to do online healings and to do distant healings, I found that, you know, with patients who are on the other side of the world, when I used toning, it was very effective to talk to their energetic bodies and open up that frequency and bring them into that frequency where healing can happen. So I started to see how toning really was effective, especially in distant healings. And of course, in in-person healings as well. Um, but in person as a healer, you know, you work more with the feeling with the sensation of energy in your hands. And, you know, you have a lot of other, um, let's say tools that can work when you are seeing the person to person. And for me, I become very um, like, like all the sensitivity goes through my hands and it's very present. Like I can feel where the energy blockages are, where, like where does it dense? Where is it cool? Where is it hot? It becomes very about the senses. But when the patients are somewhere else, there is this bridge that um, that is built through the toning that it just brings us to like this space where healing can actually happen. So the more I worked with patients um, remotely, I started to use it more and more. And as I started to use it more and more, different frequencies and different qualities started to develop. So I basically started to understand like what different tonalities do and when we heal and when we are channeled for healing, because it's really that we're a channel, you know, we receive the frequencies from our, our higher selves, but also from the higher self of the person, of the client we're working with. So I noticed how my light language and my toning changed according to the person that I was treating. So I started to see how beautiful and unique we all are that even the chanting and the channeling for a certain individual was completely different than for the next one. And that's when I started to see how the guides of the people that I work with also come through and how the higher self is coming through and is delivering messages that are specifically for that person. And this is all energetic information but it also ties in and that's when we go a little bit broader that we can also tap because we can also tap into these higher aspects of ourselves. So to the higher dimensions and the higher dimensions are our guides, our teams of light, our, our angels, our guardians. So sometimes a specific, for example, angelic energy will come through and the light language will change. So there are just the different flavors of the healing energy that can come through, but it comes right from um, this merge of the higher self of the person and me or the healer acting as a channel for that. So I started to become very, um, you know, interested in how this was working. And I came across uh, a very, very good friend of mine and she's a wonderful healer and teacher 
Um, her name is Jen. And she has a channel also, uh, it's called Created by Indigo. I don't know if you know her, um, but she was, I started to work with her and after listening to her light language transmissions and she was very pivotal in me understanding how the energy uh, was coming into my channels and how to open them more and receive more. Because sometimes as, you know, a starseed beings or as just simply old souls, let's call it, or light workers, sometimes we have these imprints, you know, when we start to activate our gifts that we may feel a little bit afraid of receiving them fully. Or we have memories of past lifetimes where we were using these gifts and perhaps something not so positive happened. Um, so it is very common that when we are starting to open our channels, sometimes these memories come up. And for me, it was a little bit like that. I was a little bit afraid to show this because it seemed like a, such a profound uh, an internal side of me. Um, but then working through it and receiving more, I understood that it was actually just the way that I interpret the energy and that each and every one of us have our own unique way of interpreting it. And we're all able to channel light language. We're all able to tap into that divine aspect of ourselves and let it flow through us. So basically it was a process of surrendering, of allowance. And, you know, when I started to sing the first tones or when it started to become a language, it was when I just simply, you know, tapped into the divine, tapped into my angels, my guides. I just let it flow through me. And it felt very similar as to when uh, when I'm painting, for example, um, you know, or when you listen to music and you just feel it vibrate through all of your being. So it's the same process of just taking light and bringing it into the body and letting it anchor into something physical, which in this case is sound. Um, but it can also be, you know, for the artist, it's a piece of music or it's a painting or it's something that you create out of the blue, but it really is something that lives within you all the time. And you just have to, you know, give it time and space and allow it to flow through you and it will come. Incredible, thank you. And <clears throat> was there any part of you um, or have you ever encountered maybe a patient who's been afraid of light language, of what's being said or not really understood what's being said and then felt maybe close to it or uncertain or hesitant? Um, well, none, like not from, you know, the healings that I have done. Um, and I think even like, patients or students or people that I talk to that are starting to open up, you know, the frequency is so high <laughs> that you just like, you kind of like put yourself to sleep even when you're chanting it. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just a matter of letting the, that frequency go through you. And I remember at the beginning, I was a bit hesitant also with some of my patients, um, but then I noticed that the information does go through and it is received not by their mind or their conscious um, awareness, but it's received by this energetic aspect of them, by their higher self, by their angels. So immediately as the light language starts, the body starts to relax. The mind kind of wants to drift off and, you know, just be in that space because of course, the more we practice and the more we have been, you know, connecting to our spirit, having our spiritual practice and becoming a channel, you know, a proper channel, we have to take care of ourselves. And the quality of that which we channel has also a lot to do with how we live our lives, how we have our spiritual practice and all of that. So 
you know, there are some things that you have to take care of, of course, and, you know, to make sure that you're taking care of yourself um, first and foremost. But in the general, I think almost everybody, like even people who have no idea of spirituality or healing or anything, they will just be soothed by, by the sound because in the end, it's just healing being received, but in a different way. It's just being carried through the sound. Amazing. I love that. <clears throat> it's like even what the conscious mind doesn't know, the body understands, the, the frequencies are understood. Yes. Yes. Very helpful, Lana. <laughs> um, and so uh, if, you, if, if you're able, would you be willing to share with us tones that we can be using uh, to navigate uh, this particular moment, anything that comes through for those who are listening or perhaps catching the recording of this? Is there a tone that we can use now to bring ourselves together? Um, why don't we do that? <laughs> why don't we tone a little bit, all of us together? I'm into it. Let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, one, um, one thing that uh, it's, it's, it's being suggested is like right before I started, one of the exercises that I got was tone the frequency of your heart. Like this can be even like a daily practice for those of you who want to start receiving your light language and connecting. You can just sit down as if you were going to meditate and just start to listen to the, your heartbeat and place your hands on your heart I'm breathing very deeply and just starting to feel, how does my heart feel? Like what tone does my heart want to speak? And when you're ready, you can, you know, just breathe in and tone. It can be an ohm, it can be any sound that you want to create. But the point is not the word. The point is what frequency is it toning? Like it can be a very high tone. It can be a very low. So try to locate, you know, the frequency of your heart because that's also your, the frequency of your, um, of your life's rhythm. When you're in tune with your heart, then you can be in tune with the flow of energy through your body. And the more you chant it, the more you become this vessel, this full circle. And you start to move that tone through this circle. And the more you move it, the more it is healing and soothing to your soul. Because it's like a lullaby for your heart. So that would be a nice practice for those of you who want to start, just to start to find the tones and they may change through time. You may see that as you heal your heart or as things come up, there will be a change in the tones. And there is no right and wrong. There is just, you know, it's just a process of getting to know yourself and what tone soothes you. And from there, you can start to build and build that practice. And perhaps, you know, suddenly you start receiving more than a tone. Maybe it's a melody. And it's just like when you intuitively like mum, you know, or like kind of chant or the song or pieces of a song that you don't really know, but you're just singing it through the joy and the love of your heart. It's that kind of energy that allows that light language to come inside, to come into your body. So if you want right now, just so you get a little bit of a sense of this energetically, why don't we close our eyes, if everybody wants to do this, and just taking a deep breath in. And we're going to connect you all with your guides, your angels, your guardians, with the Divine Mother and the Divine Father. And just taking this 
moment to anchor into the now, anchoring through your breath, letting go of any thoughts, letting go of any feelings or emotions. Just coming into the awareness of the beauty of this moment. And you can place your hands on your heart. And you can even place one hand on your heart and one on your womb or below the navel for the men, guys out there. And just taking a deep breath in. And notice how this channel, your channel of light starts to receive these beautiful light codes they look like colors, they're sacred geometries, spheres. And notice what color is coming through. What type of energy? Is it cooling? Is it soothing? And we're going to ask all of your angels and your guides to assist you to tune into your own unique expression of light language, your own unique expression as the soul. So going all the way inside to discover yourself as the soul, receiving all of this information in colors and light. Activating all of your senses, all of the meridians of your body, tuning and calibrating and relaxing your nervous system, your muscles, all of your systems of the body, slowing everything down and seeing how the colors become brighter. And when you're ready, you can chant with me if you want. Or if not, you can only listen. And if you feel guided or inspired, you can chant along or tone along. Mm -hmm. Just opening your heart, allowing your heart to receive and to express. We're just starting to receive support from the grandmothers and the grandfathers of your lineages. And this ancient knowledge, this divine light that is coming from Mother Earth. And they're like encouraging everyone, like, yes, connect. Connect. 
encouraging to receive that vibration and to let it flow through your energy bodies. And for many of you, it's just opening pathways, opening the channels for this light to come in, to find its own way. And you don't have to worry about it. This all happens divinely as it is divine intelligence, divine consciousness acting on your behalf. Kia shea ta hani aikia to rayana shaita to yana heva to yana to yana. And this is just like receiving this beautiful pink energy into the heart, opening up like a flower to the sun. As you do this conscious intent of connecting to your light, to your own unique expression, all of the parts of you and your body that are ready to connect, start to open up to that light, just as a flower would. And breathe it all in and to your bodies. And we're going to ask the help of your teams, your angels, your guides to assist you in opening up if this is what you desire, opening up your channels to start to receive all of these light frequencies, light healing, and loving information that you need that is supportive of you at this moment in time. In your own capacity to the degree that you're able to receive it right now. At the speed and the rate that you're able to integrate divinely and properly. Letting go of all fear, or perhaps shame, or anything that may get in the way of you just receiving and being the channel of the divine light that is within you. And that was just a crown activation. So we thank all of your angels, your guides. We thank each and every one of you for receiving the light in this way, for transmitting the light in this way, and for being here on your paths. We honor you. Thank you so much. And we can breathe in deeply. You can continue to stay there with your eyes closed if you guys want to continue to receive. Knowing that all of the information that will come, it will be received by your energetic selves. So you don't have to figure it out right away. It will just come.
and grounding all of you into your roots, into the beautiful Mother Earth. And allowing this activation to continue to anchor in all of your bodies. Breathing deeply. And you can also have a glass of water that will also help to move the energies. How are you doing, DK? <laughs> that was extraordinary. <laughs> Every time it's exquisite, Lana. Thank you. <laughs> You're so welcome. <laughs> yeah, I definitely like I, the second you opened up with the toning, like my whole body started to get like the feather chills <laughs> moving up and down. And I could feel the energy flowing. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Bliss. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'll ask those in the chat who did this with us. How was that for you guys? Um, Kim Mai shares, that was amazing. Kitty uh, Nico Chen says, thank you for the light codes. Uh, Nacho Mama says, much love always and in all ways. <laughs> um, such a sweet gift, Lana. Spiritual Coffee says, oh my gosh, that was amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, so much gratitude flowing your way. That was a beautiful transmission and uh, many healing for us. Thank you. Oh, you guys are welcome. Um, so, uh, you know, we, and as the wheel of the astrological year turns, Mm -hmm. uh, in April, the end of April, we had the Divine Masculine's new moon, the new moon in Aries, first masculine moon of the astrological year. Mm -hmm. Then we had the first feminine moon, the new moon in Taurus, and that was uh, the, I think, getting, I can't remember at this point, but it was like end of April, beginning of May, maybe. Yes. And, and then now we have the Gemini new moon, which I call the twins new moon. Mm. And I'm just curious, as you have followed the flow of energy over the last uh, 60 to 90 days, mm -hmm. energetically, what have you seen unfolding for the twin collective? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a too big of a question? <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, so many things. Um, but, you know, if we narrow it for, you know, the Twin Flame Collective and, well, for me, the Twin Flame Collective goes into the spiritual collective, right? All of the souls yes. are awakening. I feel like uh, it has been such an important time for all of us. Like, I have seen, you know, so many people just understanding why they are here <laughs> and many you know of course coming into more awareness of mission and many such as you such as other light workers just going about like beyond everything to serve broader and i think this collective effort is really helping anchor more light um, I know there have been very like uh, hard transitions through this whole, uh, you know, letting go of the old that we were living also like through this virus, through all the circumstances that we have at hand. But it has also been this beautiful opportunity for us to just dive deeper into, you know, the meaning of all and just into our souls, our paths, and where we're really, where we really want to go. So 
I have seen or the way that I am perceiving this is a lot of uh, preparation mode. <laughs> it's like this kind of like grace period or this, um, this time and this space granted for everyone to kind of really do the deep work and, and be prepared, you know, and many missions unfolding, even the preparation phase for twins or for, you know, anyone that is stepping into their mission is also like already part of, of the mission itself. It's kind of like the big, um, it's kind of like, well, not, it's not a battle, like the last battle, but it's like this really deep dive into ourselves in order to come out in this better version or this more um, peaceful version or more attuned version of who we are so that we're able to ground that also. So, you know, we're working so much multidimensionally also that, you know, with the twin, through the masculine and the feminine energies, um, the feminine, especially in that new moon, in that full moon, for me, it was so powerful how much um, release that brought, especially like to the feminine. And I think since then it has been also like rebuilding this very, very strong foundation and I feel a lot of the feminine collective, um, you know, coming into this uh, power and this sense of um, peace and understanding and also this surrender, this deep surrender. So I feel like this is what we have been practicing. And through the masculine, I feel like this, they're coming into that surrender too. Um, a little bit through example, through all that is going on, but we're all constantly presented with these two choices of, you know, do you want to be in resistance or do you want to surrender? And usually surrendering to the light will get you faster to, you know, where you need to be. So I think this is, you know, a lot of, uh, what we have been going through. And I feel a lot of excitement though, on the other hand, like so much wrap up work, but on the other hand, there is this like imminent opportunities that will present imminent, you know, full going fully into mission or going fully into your awakening journey for some, or going fully into your healing journey or going fully into you know, perhaps even just loving yourself. I have been, you know, talking a lot about self-love, um, especially in this past months since this whole thing started because I noticed how important it is to have that, which is like the basics, really, really, really grounded in ourselves, in our physical realities, so that we are able to ground more union so that we're able to ground more you know the broadening of our mission and so that we're able to ground these spiritual divine connections but on earth you know the stronger our foundation is the better prepared we are for that because of course in the in this dimension things are a little bit rockier <laughs> than in the higher dimensions so that is partly what I feel that we're being prepared right now for. Wonderfully helpful. Thank you for that. Thank you for that insight. It's, you know, uh -huh. it, it mirrors with a lot of what the astrology has been showing that there's mm -hmm. been a deepening of our connection to self and a lot of clearing of old paradigms, templates, thought yeah. patterns um, that have kind of anchored us into lower vibrational behavioral patterns and uh, interactive patterns with uh, loved ones in our lives and people we don't know. 
Mm-hmm. And so the, um, you know, the movement of, you know, the two planetary energies I read as the twins in the sky have mm-hmm. been showing, you know, the, a real stripping of calcified um, masculine templates that are outdated for where we're going as humanity and both, you know, men and women bodies can have those calcified templates in the mind and the heart. Yeah. And there's been a breakdown of that calcification, um, and a real, it's like a heart, humble heart opening and like an ego humbling at the same time. Mm and a shift from mind to heart energy as the operating energy for the human body. And in the divine feminine, there's been a real turning inward and a shifting to look, who am I? What am I? What do I give? What is the truth? A Mm. real willingness to surrender to truth um, and a fully integrated self um, that has heart, mind, body, and soul fully aligned as one, as opposed to a self that is split. Mm. Um, body over here doing this thing, mind over there, you know, having this belief, but that all other competing belief, and then heart in a third place. <laughs> yes. um, this period of time, this introduction to 2020, there's been a real uh, integration for our feminine energies, you know, kind of coming into oneness with itself Mm -hmm. and thereby, instead of being wide and spread out, being deep and integrated and having the capacity for more depth and more holding of that union energy. Um, Yeah. So, um, It's been such a really beautiful, you know, roll into this year, knowing, you know, where it's all headed is to, you know, this place of rebirth, (laughs) place of rebirth coming. I promise it's coming, (laughs) Um, but having opportunities to connect with souls like yourself who are anchoring love into the template for all of us and helping us navigate uh, some of the tumult that the shaking can cause as we, you know, the calcification crumbles away (laughs) and the integration starts to, you know, help, you know, divine feminines break free from places where they've been self entrapped. Yeah. Um, There's a real, the shaking of the emotional ground while these changes take place can become very intense. So it was partly why I wanted to have you on uh, Mm. because we're about to move into another chapter for the year as the divine feminine turns direct and leaves her retrograde. The divine masculine moves into retrograde this week. Um, Yeah. It just, we're marking, you know, a new chapter for the year. And so it was like, okay, I need to to take a breath, (laughs) get some healing in. (laughs) So I really appreciate you being here. Um, Thank you, Kay. Yeah. I'm curious, Lana, um, (coughs) as you're, um, as you've been feeling into um, individually, kind of moving through, or the masculine energy is moving through, um, what has your light work shown you? The individual journeys are looking like at this time. Mm-hmm. Well, in what you were saying, um, I have noticed, you know, in that part of the feminine um like coming into this like stronger foundation and I have been doing a lot of work in you know letting those moments of like using vulnerability as a way to open the door for the gifts of the divine feminine and this is also in men or in women so through our society and through everything you know that we have lived 
there's always this like little shell or this part of us that you know is afraid of being vulnerable right especially if we have been hurt if we have experienced trauma or pain which of course we all have and you know if you're a twin flame oh my god you have probably uh, different experiences and also as a healer or light worker whoever you know we all have these um points or or places or times where we feel extra vulnerable but so what i'm i'm seeing through the feminine energy is that there is this opportunity to use that vulnerability to actually create and manifest the power so similarly to a woman that is you know about to give birth for example um, which is the ultimate, you know, bringing the higher dimensions into the physical reality, right? That's the way, you know, angels are born, <laughs> etc. So when we see that moment, it's actually a, like the most vulnerable moment, perhaps, in a woman's life. But at the same time, it's the most powerful moment. So when we can start to shift the lens and the perspective through which we identify as the feminine or where we think that the scars and the wounds are of the feminine and when we can start to rewrite the story and empower ourselves through that, we can actually see that vulnerability is actually an incredible opportunity for us to shine brighter and for us to conquer our fears and for us to be free of those fears and perhaps even free of those emotions. So for example, one of the things that I see a lot is this attachment, right? To the twin flame person or to the relationship or sometimes it's even the attachment to um, you know, to something fulfilling itself or to something placed in the future. But if we go inside in the now moment and we let those moments of vulnerability change us and transform us, and perhaps that means, you know, feeling the tears and really taking a moment to just, you know, really feel, what am I feeling? Like, where is this coming from? And just allowing yourself to feel perhaps everything that is not in your spiritual manual book, you know, you should feel like peace, you should be at peace, or you should be like this. But maybe you need to feel all of the range of emotions in order to know that they're just emotions and that you can rise above them as the feminine and that you can empower yourself. And that every time vulnerability comes, it's an opportunity for you to grow beyond that which makes you vulnerable. And this happens also in the feminine aspect of the masculines. Because there's a part that I see a lot that is a little bit hard for the masculines to really tap into their vulnerability into their own feminine and recognize her inside and say, you know, it's safe for you to express. So I encourage everyone, whether you're feminine or masculine to, you know, take a look at your inner masculine and your inner feminine and how you're holding these in your life. Like how much space can you hold for the feminine if the feminine needs to cry a river for two days or you know, how much says the feminine needs to hold if the masculine, you know, wants to go into so many actions and, and things. And, you know, perhaps it can be balanced. I have been seeing that, you know, the masculines are kind of learning how to be free from their actions in the world because that is all the conditioning and all the programming of thinking, well, the more I do, the more valuable I am, or, you know, the more I have, the more I will be. 
seen perhaps by the other or I will be acknowledged or all of those things. So when the masculine can you know, embrace himself in the non-action and learn how not to act and just to feel and to be, it opens up a new strength in the masculine where they can just build that light forward knowing that they are whole no matter what they do, no matter how they present in the outside world, and no matter if they're recognized or not by the outside world. And that is part of the task of bringing that inner union in. Knowing your worth, knowing your light, knowing that you are worthy of love because you are here, just because you're breathing, you have always been worthy. And with the feminine, it's also, you know, knowing that no matter how your emotions make you feel, or no matter, you know, how deeply you feel the world, you are also able to go beyond the emotions and see that you are not your emotions. You can be free of those attachments if they are not bringing you into a peaceful place, if they're not serving you. So it's part of learning what to release. And when the feminine is free of that attachment to her emotions, she can actually feel the world in a much, you know, much more profound way. And she can actually start to experience love and joy in a, a way that is not conditioned by anything outside of herself. And this is also bringing in the inner union. So that's a bit what I have been seeing <laughs> uh, so for both. Profound. So profound. Um, it, it's that that I, and you talked about that in the last post you shared on your channel that the feminine is learning to see that she is not her emotions and the masculine learning to see that he is not his actions mm -hmm. they're both so much more than just what they feel and what they do yes it's such a beautiful share i really appreciate that well i'm inclined to in the floor for questions for people to ask are you open for that of course fabulous um and what kind of questions would you like to answer today should people ask personal questions for personal healing should ask general questions about the collective and patterns and experiences what's what's the right way to engage tonight um Well, perhaps if it's something, you know, that the general can also relate or like some more general questions. Um, but of course, all general questions tap into the individual. So, you know, <laughs> whatever, whatever they, they feel like asking, we're here to support. Okay, fantastic. I just shared that they can ask their questions now in the chat. Um, super exciting. <laughs> if you guys have not received a healing from Lana personally, <clears throat> um, I just, I highly encourage it. Um, you know, when I was at some of my most difficult places in the journey, um, and at the tail end of some of that, I encountered Lana and she just helped pull me through mm -hmm. in a way that I just, I could not have done given where I was at at that time. I needed assistance and, you know, sometimes it's beautiful to receive assistance. Sometimes there's much we can do on our own. Yeah. Um, but when you're recognizing, you know, that you need a healing assistance, um, She's just a wonderful gift um, for healing in that regard. <clears throat> Choose Love says that she feels a pull to the divine path currently, almost like she's in cruise control. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then Lena Odeer uh, personally asks, where do we go from here? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and now, now questions are starting to flow in. So I'll read a few things and then you just let me know what you feel really drawn okay. to respond to. Choose Love goes on to say, pull to the divine path like she's in cruise, cruise control. Um, is there any truth in that, that it could be a pull that feels like cruise control on a car? Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. I mean, it depends, of course, how like we all live our journeys and especially our spiritual journeys in very, very different ways. And as we are evolving, our experiences and the range of our experiences evolves as well. So in some moments, you may feel like, oh, my God, I know exactly like they're pulling me, they're taking me, I feel carried. And that's a beautiful moment. And sometimes there are moments where we're not even aware, we're just going on about life, but we're actually heading into, you know, the biggest life changing moments of our lives. So, you know, when you are feeling that you are there, that's a, actually a beautiful blessing. Because then, you know, being on cruise uh, control means that you can let go of control. Right. So this is part of what we do also, when, when we start to live in the moment, when we start to, you know, be in that flow of energy, we can just be, and we don't have to figure it all out. We don't have to know. We don't even have to know what's going to happen and how it's going to happen. If you want to be in your highest path, on your highest path, you can set your intention and say, you know, talk to God, talk to your angels, talk to the divine and say, God, you know, I did it my way. <laughs> now we can do it your way. Just guide me to my highest path and be sure that I don't miss any signs and be sure that I, I can follow, you know, to everywhere you want me to go. And that is this deep surrender to the divinity that is within you because God is within you. So when you do that, you just let your higher self, you know, take control of the journey. And then you can just, you know, be the co-pilot and relax and enjoy it more. Knowing and trusting that you're always going to be taken to a safe place. You're always going into a place of more light. There's no going back in the light. That's why we're evolving. There's no going back. So we can always receive and receive more. And, you know, focus our energies in the now where we can actually benefit from those energies instead of focusing them on the past or on the future where they're not serving anymore. So, yeah, <laughs> I hope oh, that helps. That is a beautiful answer. Thank you. The questions are definitely rolling in now. So I'll just read them for everyone listening. I'll go in the order they were received and we'll probably go for about a good 40 minutes. Um, so stick around. Um, and maybe if we're lucky, Lana will tone us out. <laughs> I will. I will do a healing though if you guys want a, a small one. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> The answer is yes, we would love a healing. All right, so we'll do some questions. We'll do a healing. We'll do some questions and close. How about that? Wonderful. Sound good? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so Rachel says, um, how, can, how can you help me and my twin release addiction? We are in separation. Okay. Are uh, both of you in, like in the same addict, like both have addiction or only one of you? I'm not sure. She didn't say anything else. So we'll let her give her a moment to respond and come back. Let's go to the next question. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Selma Suleiman says, I'm definitely struggling with detachment from twin. I feel shut down and become cynical 
or I'm crying, not all the time, but it keeps coming back in waves. Any insight? I actually have some astrological insight about that, but um, I'd love to know what your thoughts and experiences and channelings are for that. Mm -hmm. Let me see. What's her name again? Salma Suleiman. Okay. Yeah. Well, I feel like, you know, it's part of the, of the process <laughs> of, you know, when part of us is still <clears throat> kind of battling um, or holding this, you know, a little bit of resistance to, um, you know, to where the journey is taking us or to perhaps to how things are. Um, you know, when, when we can't seem to change things on the physical aspect, on the physical plane, sometimes the part of us, you know, that is most attached here to the outcomes of our physical experience may come into this, you know, kind of like being in a tantrum of saying, you know, but I want this. Why can't I have this? now <laughs> right because we usually um you know that part of us that wants things to happen or that um attaches itself to certain things and it doesn't matter what it is it can be your twin but it can be also a certain outcome of your life or a certain thing when we attach ourselves it's only because of this fear of losing that but when we are in the, in the illusion that we might lose something, that's when we start to resist, you know, or a part of us goes and shuts down or perhaps blames it on the other person and things like that. But what I would encourage, um, dear Selma, is, you know, to work on bringing in more, more love into you, into your everyday life, and perhaps just shifting the focus of where your energy is going, it can allow, you know, slowly that deep attachment to start to let go. Because the attachments to things are only there because we are focusing our energy on them or because we're focusing our energy on them because we're afraid of losing them. But if there's a part of you that knows that you know you're not able to lose anything because you are divine you're connected with all so the more you anchor that knowing into you and give yourselves reasons not to be afraid and show yourself in the 3d how how nothing happens really like if you can like walk yourself through let's say the worst case scenario or just seeing that anything may play out in different ways, but whatever we are holding on to, it is not really in our control. So just letting go of that control can allow things to start shifting. And putting your focus on something else, as it allows you to, perhaps it's, you know, just instead of focusing 100% of your time in this other person, you can perhaps focus on you and focus on what makes you feel good and how to anchor that love and that freedom in your life in other ways. And in that way, you can start to model that energetically to that part of you, which still needs perhaps that attachment. But not to do it, you know, in a harsh way or, you know, um, being hard on yourself for having that attachment just knowing that it is there and that it is there because of something and when we learn that reason why it's there we can start to shift it and send it more love and send love to the part of us that is attached to it and you know just give it reassurance that no matter what it's not going to lose it things do not get lost in energy that is just an illusion of 
you know, the reality that we live in. And knowing that, you know, all the love that you put into yourself or that you have always expressed, it never goes, um, it never goes away. It's always there. So we can tap into that consciousness of the now and making your present reality something that is beautiful and full of love and full of joy and focusing your energies there may allow you to not only detach but start to create that outside as well and let it be reflected through all encounters including your twin flame. I hope that helps. <laughs> Hello, Kay. Oh, so I like talking to myself sometimes. I just do, oh. <laughs> and then I talk to myself. Um, <laughs> um, I, it's just entertaining for me. Don't mind me. <laughs> um, beautiful. That was a beautiful, beautiful response. Um, I think you and I had different um, understanding of the question when she said she was struggling with detachment. My understanding was that she felt already detached, but I think you got it right because oh. she just responded back. Thank you so very much. Um, yeah, okay. So <laughs> I, think she, I think your interpretation was probably very correct. Let's go on to the next <laughs> Um, definitely some people reaching out for healings. I see some notes about that here. Um, PL asked the question, if you don't feel like you resonate or feel the light language in the 3d, does it still benefit your higher self? I like it, but I think maybe I'm missing something. LOL. <laughs> Meditate. <laughs> um, well, you know, in everything, different things come to us at different times and you know for me it's always I always let my heart choose what feels right um like I if I think about myself when I was starting the journey I was so into you know Buddhist chants and you know some sound really really harsh like they're like powerful chants and you know now I'm more into other types of sounds but it really just depends on you and you know what really soothes you, what makes you feel good. If you don't feel good while listening to you know, any type of language, light language or music, or you know, for me, sometimes even you know, by the binaural tones or binaural beats that they have, I am super picky with that because not all have the frequency which I resonate with. So in anything that you do, whether it's a healer, whether it's listening to somebody, always listen to your inner guidance and to your inner voice that tells you, this feels good, this feels yummy, this feels expansive, this is supporting. And when you feel like, oh, no, what's that? <laughs> you know, when you feel that like back pull or whatever, that, that energy, um, that it just simply doesn't resonate, don't make you know, don't make it fit, don't make it resonate. If it doesn't, it just doesn't. And, you know, perhaps it will come in another way or you will encounter it later. Or perhaps it's just something that is not, you know, supporting you in this particular moment. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Okay. So uh, let's do more and then we'll do the healing and then we'll come back for questions. Does those sound good? Yeah. All right. So um, Rachel Heaton, she uh, was the one who asked the first question. Uh, she had said that she and her twin were both struggling with addiction All and right. she wanted to know how to heal. She had shared that uh, they have different addiction, uh, an addiction to class A's. 
Um, and for her, it's cannabis and tobacco, and she would like to help the healing for both of them. Okay. Well, you know, as a twin, what I would recommend, um, you know, of course, for these types of, of healings, I, or for these types of things, I do recommend, you know, perhaps having a couple of sessions of healing sessions and, you know, just going in deeper because addictions have their roots and like very early in our lives. And there's like a whole process of unwinding it so that, you know, the addiction itself is just a result of many other things that come first. So, you know, it's a journey. It's a little bit of a deeper journey. So what you can do right now, uh, I feel, you know, without any external help or whatever is, you know, first of all, to know that if you can start to heal that in yourself, it will help your twin. So not that you're carrying both of your energies and, you know, not to be, you know, doing healings on behalf of him, but actually just working on your own energy and modeling that energetically to him, it will help him if he wants or if he is in the place where he actually wants to change. Because addictions are just patterns that we repeat and we continue to do them until we're tired and we want to change. But we are all ready to change at our different times and different moments. So when I see twins that are going through, you know, one has addictions and the other doesn't or both have, I always recommend that you focus on you first and of getting as clean and clear as possible from those energies so that you're in this balanced place and you can actually model that energetically for your twin because they will see that i mean they will um they will sense it they will feel it and they will kind of like be giving the chance to you know follow the same path as you did it's kind of like you being the way shower um, and also if your twin, you know, struggles with addiction and if you, let's say, don't have as strong uh, as, as uh, like, um, as his addictions, uh, it's also very um, wise, I would say, or it's very good to, you know, not have any kind of addiction or try to, you know, if your twin is addicted to alcohol, for example, if you can refrain from drinking alcohol as much as you can, that can also help energetically. Um, so modeling that. And, and, you know, also accepting and, and knowing that when your twin, and if your twin is ready to change and to heal that, he will, and he will find the way and he will find the support but it is not your responsibility to heal him. It is your responsibility to heal yourself, your energy. And as you do it, I think things will start to shift. Um, and also you will have more energy to focus on yourself and to be able to heal yourself because if we carry energy that is not ours, even if it's our twins, we can deplete ourselves and we don't have enough resources to actually go into our own healing. And healing from any kind of addiction takes um, takes a little bit of energy and it is a path. So, you know, the more you can, you can just, if you want, you can ask God and your twin's higher self and his angels to help him, to assist him. And, you know, to give him back the responsibility for his healing and take back your responsibility for your own healing. And just see how it feels. And actually, um, I don't know if there are others who have the same thing, but if you guys want, I can just walk you through it like in one minute, just to say the words and perhaps bring in this, you know, clarity of energy so that 
the fields are always connected, but they're not, you know, um, like doing things that they shouldn't be doing for each other. So, you know, that they're connected, but each, each one has their own responsibilities. So why don't you take a deep breath in? And we're just going to ask God, your angels, your guides, his angels, his guides, his teams of light, to be present, to wrap you in a beautiful light. And we're going to ask from the core of God to please retrieve all of your energies, all of your twin, all of the responsibilities for your healing, for your path, for your life. I give back all of the responsibilities for his healing, for his path, for his life, back to your twin. And letting each soul just receive their own responsibilities for their own energy, for their own life. in a way that both of you have enough resources, enough energy to allow this healing to occur within you, within each one of you. And letting go of the responsibility, especially the energetic responsibility of the other. As divine light beings, we're not responsible for the energy of the others, not even our children. In an energetic sense only, of course, we're only responsible for our own energy, for our own channels of life, for our own change, for our own transformation. And we give back all of the power that we ever took away for people because they were innocently trying to change them. And understanding that whatever they're going through, wherever they are on their journeys, they're there because they have something to learn there. And as they heal their journey, they become more empowered and they learn the lessons that they came here to learn as a soul. So we stand in deep reverence and honoring for each and everyone's path, for their evolution process, for their awakening, for their spiritual journey, for their twinkling journey, for their spiritual unfolding. Honoring each and everyone exactly where they are, knowing that we're only responsible for our own healing, for our own lives, for our own channels of light. And in that way, we're able to serve more as a divine channel of light. And we're able to model that change that we do, that we represent in the world. And we're able to assist everybody who comes in contact with us everyone who even sees us, everyone who crosses our path. And this is the gift of ascension, of healing and working on yourself and modeling that. And just seeing if that feels lighter just like taking this weight off of your shoulders, off of your back. And they're also saying that, you know, if you are wanting to heal this and you're wanting to um, 
overcome this addiction. You can do it. So use that impulse, use that awareness that you have right now. And, you know, it will take you to your next step in the journey, to your next place, to the next level. And I sent you many blessings. We sent you many blessings to all of you. So very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful healing. Thank you. So yeah, if you want to deepen along those lines, you can definitely reach out to Lana to do an individual session. Um, and uh, yeah, that, I'll place the links for healings with Lana just below the video if you're watching uh, the recording. And if you're catching it live, I'll place it here again. Um, let's do one more question and then we'll do a collective healing, shall we? Wonderful. Awesome. Okay. So MY asks, how do we know if the pull that we're feeling is from our twin, you know, because either they want us to reach out or we're supposed to reach out or connect in some way, or if it's our own inner child wounding, that's causing us to feel, you know, reattached and, you know, more and more like the need for the twin. How do we know which is which if all we're experiencing is just a strong pull? A strong pull towards the twin. Yeah. Um, well, it depends. How does that pull make you feel? <laughs> um, because if the pull makes you feel uneasy or anxious or you know worried or you start to go into your mind and start to question what is this what is this is this my twin this is not my twin is this you know i i talk about this a lot because you know we are in a time where you know especially as you awaken and you're going through the process of awakening you may feel many weird things, you know, just to call them very basically weird things, weird sensations. Um, and, you know, sometimes this can be, it's, it's a little bit tricky in the beginning to know if this is coming from you, like you said, from, you know, a part of you that perhaps is longing for the twin or if it's coming from a deeper inner knowing that, you know, you should act on this or you should do this. But what can help you identify is the type of energy that comes along with the pull. So if the type of energy that comes along is an energy of stress, uneasiness, uh, kind of like desperation, uh, or this feeling like I have to do this now or else, <laughs> you know, like this uh, feeling of urgency. If it's coming with that type of energy, it's probably coming from your ego, which can be triggered by those, you know, child wounds, or it can be triggered by so many different things. And when the ego goes into alarm mode, everything has to be done now. It's like, it's emergency. <laughs> you know, It's like, you know, run for your life. Go, go feel the twin. And what you can see is, okay, if it's coming from that kind of an energy, try to be the observer when you feel the pull. And try to, you know, locate perhaps, why is the pull occurring? What were you doing right before it happened? How were you feeling? What were you thinking? And if you can, just as an exercise, just as you get to know how your energy is telling you things, you can write it down and be very specific. You can just be like one sentence, you know, I was doing this, I was thinking about this, then I started feeling like this, and then I felt the pool, <laughs> you know. Sometimes it's not so easy to identify, I know that too. But, you know, as it happens, it gets easier to identify it. And sometimes when we feel 
lack or when we feel abandonment or when we feel uh, alone perhaps or when we feel sadness or when we feel perhaps even rejected by the twin. All of those feelings are feelings that perhaps are not the nicest to feel, right? So our ego can start to panic and be like, nope, I don't want to feel that. Let's just go into another feeling. Yeah, why don't I focus on how much I miss my twin? <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like the ego wanting you, like to protect you from feeling those emotions and replacing them by this need or this um, impulse, you know, to, to basically it's to receive that love and that support from another. So from your twin, because the twin is the first source that we're connected to after God, right? So if God is not giving me that, I'll just go and see if my twin gives me that. Um, and of course, if the twin is not available, then it becomes, um, you know, becomes even harder. So what I recommend is to stop yourself right there when you're starting to feel the pull and to analyze where it's coming from. Because if the energy is peaceful, if the energy feels like joy, if it feels like just peaceful, not even joy, because joy is also like an altered state. If it feels peaceful and neutral and a part of you says, yeah, I think, you know, I, I should, you know, give him a call, see how he's doing, or, oh, I would like to chat, or, you know, however you are, and wherever you are in your relationship, or if it feels very calm and easy, and it feels like, you know, I could do it right now, or I could wait, you know, until tomorrow and do it. If it's that kind of energy, then it's probably coming from your intuition. It's probably an insight. And you know, it's probably something that perhaps is just there to come into your awareness. And you can even ask, okay, should I act upon this knowledge or what should I do? And you can start this <laughs> inner dialogue, um, but always from a peaceful place. Because when we react and we're not in a peaceful place, we tend to do very rash decisions and we tend to act on survival mode. And many times that survival mode gets us into these loops of thinking and if the twin is involved in any way it can get the twin also into that a kind of energy so if you are in separation and you know you're both working on yourselves i would say you know when that pull happens see it as, a, as an opportunity to fulfill yourself with that which you are needing or craving for from your twin if you can't locate it, perhaps it's love, perhaps it's support, perhaps it's encouragement, perhaps it's just um, being with yourself. Then try to do it with you. Try to fill yourself up with light. Go take yourself out on a walk or, you know, go to the movies or do something that really brings that joy and that um, calmness to your inner child, to your ego. And, you know, just let them know that whatever is happening, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling this, you can feel it. And it's safe to feel those emotions because emotions just come and go. They're like waves, just like this beautiful wave we're looking at. <laughs> they come and go all the time. They're not fixed. So they don't determine things. Okay. So I hope that helps. It's such a wonderful explanation, Lana. Thank you. And I think, well, you know, in different times, you know, there are so many things to be felt on the awakening journey. And it's like, yeah. whoa, what is this? Where is it coming from? Yeah. Uh, well, let's go ahead and into a healing, shall we? And then we'll close yeah. out with one or two more questions. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay. So... Let's all just, um, if you can, just sit comfortably. Can I lay down? Yes. <laughs> just checking. You can, everyone. <laughs> you can lay down <laughs> if you want. To. And you can close your eyes. Um, Sure. 
to feel this energy come in through your channels. Every time you take a deep breath in, receiving this beautiful wave-like energy on blue tonalities and pink and violet Piakura sham payatia tiand taya. And starting to open up at the heart level. I'm just seeing how many of you are just expanding your chest, your wings, your heart, expanding your capacity to receive light through your heart and start to bring us in this awareness of who you truly are, what you are truly here to do. Kuyasha. And how all of the current events, people, places, situations around you. Everything is there to show you something. Everything is there to support you in one way or another. So we're starting to receive this beautiful blue tone into your head, into your shoulders. And they're just starting to clear all of your space and time continuums through the back, going from your shoulders and your back all the way beyond the veil into infinity, Paishakaya. Receiving this deep cleanse of all of your energetic bodies. For all of you who are ready to receive this, and we're asking all of your teams, your guides, your angels, your higher self to stand by you, supporting you, holding your hand as you receive. And just tuning your channels to the proper proportion for you to receive the most today in your own unique way in the most supportive way for you right now all the clarity the healing the love the insight the knowledge the wisdom that you need right now for you to continue your journey as the soul as a divine child. And just letting that sink into your heart, that awareness, into your womb space or your energetic womb if you're a man. Just letting that settle in and start to flow this beautiful white and blue energy into your body like a stream of water, of healing waters. Toro shakya tarama hareha shenahe. 
I connect you to your starlight lineages and also connecting through your roots, through your feet, to your ancestors, Priyasham, to all those parts of you that have been or are way showers, light workers, healers, transformers. Because I see and feel many of you on the call connecting Priyakaya. I'm starting to hear a drum, just weaving this beautiful blue energy into Mother Earth, anchoring these colds, this light this knowledge and simultaneously receiving from Mother Earth, from the inner Earth, these beautiful configurations of light, gold and light coming up through your channels and weaving these beautiful patterns, these beautiful shapes and forms. Bring more awareness, Kanya. More divine love, Kuya. Divine compassion, Choi. Divine forgiveness, Kyai. Divine understanding, Kyana. Of the cycles of the earth, Kyaya. Of the moon. Purashaya of the sun, Munyaki, and there are just so many like codes and glyphs opening, and they're all very individual for each one of you. It's unique, and they're being opened through these energies. Bring this understanding of the pivotal channel that you are between worlds, between dimensions, between heaven and earth. What a crucial role you play just to be standing here today, breathing. How loved you are how supported you are, how seen you are by all of your angels, your guides, all of these light beings that are standing with us right now, all of your ancestors, all of your, all of the, in the elemental realms, the elementals of your body, all of the light supportive elementals of earth, all of the animals, the trees, the plants, truly really bring in this knowledge of these cycles and bring into this energetic aspect of you the divine knowing of ebb and flow. Knowing how to receive the light as it shifts. And letting the light shift you. Allowing the light that is pouring into the planet, that is pouring into you right now. It's divine pure consciousness. Just allow it to shift you. 
Allow your emotions to shift you. Allow the old to be transmuted, to be let go of. Allow all aspects of you that are not serving you anymore in any way, in any space, time, reality, through any dimension, to just fall off and release through your channels and allow them to be received by Mother Earth, to be transmuted and healed completely. Allow this breath of now to alchemize all of the cells in your body, to bring divine awareness, divine freedom, divine perception, divine vision, divine joy and divine gratitude into your heart. Gently and slowly awakening all of those parts of you that may have been dormant. All of those parts of you that may have been hiding in the shadows all of those parts of you that perhaps were unseen, unrecognized by the the outside world. And pouring this divine liquid golden light into all of those aspects of you, bringing in light into every corner of your being, especially those parts of you that need healing, especially those parts of you that we usually don't notice. Bring in all of this love and simply being open to experience the miracle of life. Simply allowing this miracle light energy to act on your behalf and to support you in all ways in which you need it right now. And they're cleansing these like, they look kind of like roots at the heart. And this may be partly heart armor. And also they're cleansing your throat. Kurama karya karyam bai karye shamahi kai and clearing out all the sadness and the tears and the pain of the throat of all, especially through the divine feminine and the divine masculine energies that are here. They're just presenting themselves to you as this energetic aspect of the divine, completely whole, completely pure, completely free, and just radiating, shining this light to you. 
on the masculine is appearing in blue, it's beautiful blue tone. And the feminine is appearing in this red tonality. And through the middle, there's this beautiful, looks like a spiral, like two spirals. And they're holding hand in hand. They're just the representation of the divine feminine and the divine masculine that lives within you that are aspects of God, of the one. And just feeling into their vibration, into their wholeness, their magnificence. And letting that aspect permeate you. Letting those qualities that they embody assist you to be able to attain them as well. Receiving divine freedom, divine union, divine love, divine patience divine understanding, divine compassion for all, divine forgiveness for all, and the capacity to birth your light forward, to birth your love forward into this reality. the capacity to be the perfect vessel, the perfect container to hold these energies of the complete, the wholeness of the feminine and masculine energies. I feel that completion within you. Feel how these energies are part of you now. And how they are perhaps shifting, alchemizing aspects of you, supporting other aspects of you, and especially supporting your capacity to see yourself as the divine light to truly see yourself as the divine being that you are, as the divine goddess and the divine God. Letting go of all that no longer serves you. And letting go of all that was keeping you from experiencing who you truly are. Mm -hmm. Shum, 
And just receiving a lot of support through the Mother Earth, through the mothers and grandmothers, receiving this medicine through this beautiful emerald color green, all of the tonalities of green, and feeling how you are receiving new ways of expressing your love, your divinity, receiving the seed that is planted now within you, that you can water and see and witness grow as you see everything with patience and peace as you allow yourself to become more aware and to receive all the gifts that are already making their way to you. The more awareness and more gifts we receive from the divine, And this is just you getting to know your divinity, getting to know yourself and going into the depths of your heart to find this stillness and this peace every time you need it, every time you wish to receive and to let go of what no longer serves you. To let this divine energy act on your behalf with no need to worry, to control, to direct. Just setting your intention through the purity of your heart. Allow yourself to receive We can Tara. And receiving this water tone, this blue tone, different tonalities of blue into your fields. As if you are swimming in the ocean. And just receiving this relaxation, this gentle movement, and welcoming this new flow of energy through your channels. May this continue to heal and assist you in all ways. And we're going to wrap you up in golden light. And we thank you. And we bow down to each and every one of your hearts. And so it is. And so it is.
very slowly coming into the body. Breathing in deeply. And coming into the awareness of now. Grounding all of these energies through your channels, through your roots. <laughs> How are you feeling, dear Kay? Blissed out, girl. <laughs> that was a treat. Thank you. You're welcome. I feel like I just went to the energy spa. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that gift. Oh, so welcome. Thank you, Kay, so much for having me here. And, sure. you know, for all the work that you're doing, for everything you're putting out there and for, you know, all the souls that you're assisting and, you know, it's wonderful to see you just shine your light, spread your light. And I'm so honored. I'm honored as well. It was a real gift and a real treat to have you here. Thank you for saying yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, man. So for those of you who... Um, would like to get a healing with Lana. She does work at a distance. Uh, you can find her um, in the link below this video. You can also find her in the chat. I just pasted it there. Lana also, um, she'll do uh, semi-monthly. Sometimes it's twice a month uh, or more uh, channelings as well as healings and open Q&A on her channel. Uh, you can, I just linked it there. You can also find the link below this video. So please, please, please subscribe. Um, because as you can see, Lana's work helps you create a vibrational attunement to a lot of peace and a lot of love. Um, and it's a wonderful vibration to be within as we move through these changes in the collective. It's a great way to anchor in. Uh, to the frequency of love and of peace and of freedom that uh, your physical body uh, is ready to receive. So, um, so much gratitude, so much deep thanks. I think we will stop here. We had talked about closing out at around six o'clock central time. So that's what we're going to do. Um, but definitely subscribe. Lana will definitely answer a lot more of your questions over on her channel. <laughs> when she goes live, she does all of the questions <laughs> and lots of healing. Um, and the way I do many readings on this channel, occasionally Lana will jump in and she will do many healings um, <laughs> in real time on her channel. And her many healings are just every bit as divine as what you just experienced. So I thank you all for being here. And I'm sending your, each of your hearts so much, so much love. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.